benevolent, merciful God. When we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us. That with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would be done. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me? Put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. You may be seated, and would the children please come up? Good morning. Oh, that was so good. You guys are getting so good at your good mornings. Thank you. You can tell schools because you know, right in there. Today we heard from St. Paul, and he was writing a letter to his friend Timothy, and he told Timothy, where are you going? Look, mommy, go look for mommy. You're going to look for mommy? Oh, where is she? She's around. I'm sure she's here. Okay, so. Paul was talking to his friend Timothy, he was writing him a letter, and he said, I am so glad that you trust in Jesus, and I am so glad that your mom, Eunice, taught you about Jesus, and I am so glad that your grandma, Lois, taught you about Jesus. Paul says, it's so great to have people tell us about Jesus and share their faith with us, and moms and grandmas are great for that. So can dads and grandpas be. So, here's my question. Did anybody teach you about Jesus? Who? Your parents? Uh huh. Good. Your grandpa. Your mom. Yeah. Me? The The house. Okay. You can sit now. Okay. I want to teach you a prayer. Two prayers that my parents taught me. Actually, I think my mom taught me mostly. Prayers that my mom taught me, and I think probably her mom taught her when she was little. So the first time was a mealtime prayer, and maybe some of you say this prayer, and maybe you don't. It goes like this. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Do any of you say a prayer like that? Some, some maybe sometimes. Before every meal, I still say it today. And we're going to say it together. It goes, I'll say it again. I know, I, I will say one part and you echo me. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. And let these gifts to us be blessed. And let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Amen. What gifts do you think you're talking about at a meal prayer? What, Jacinda? Yeah, right. The food that you have and the people who made it for you and the people you're with, yeah. All those things. The other prayer is a bedtime prayer. Okay? Now, maybe some of you say this one. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord your child to keep. Your love guard me through the night and wake me with the morning light. Amen. Do any of you say something like that? Some of you do. Did you have a question too, Jacinda, or something to say? Uh 
Huh? Now, I don't want you to go to sleep yet because it's not sleepy time, but we're going to say this is a bedtime prayer. We'll do it like an echo too, okay? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord your child to keep. Your love guard me through the night and wake me with the morning light. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for learning those prayers with me. I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you these prayers to take home so you can say them if you want to at home. Meal time and bedtime. And you can, if you don't read yet, that's okay because your moms or dads can read them to you. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our first reading from Habakkuk and our Gospel today from Luke both address crises in faith. We hear about people who willingly served God, who devoted their lives to the Lord's service, but who nevertheless found themselves struggling deeply in their lives of faith. The prophet Habakkuk's lament seems so contemporary that it could have been written this morning. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? How often do we ask those same kinds of questions? Last Sunday, Phyllis and I grabbed a quick sandwich between the organ recital and the beginning of confirmation class. In the restaurant, we were surrounded by TV screens. One was showing the Eagles Steelers game. The other four were running news on four separate channels. Shootings, stabbings, police misconduct, violent protests, starving refugees, war, terrorism, child neglect, over the course of one sandwich. It can all be overwhelming and demoralizing, even for people of faith. It makes us wonder where God is in all this mess. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Sometimes it's so hard to have faith. It was for the apostles too. Increase our faith, they begged of Jesus. He had taught them, blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you who weep. Hearing those words, they must have thought, Increase our faith so that we can see the blessings in our poverty and in our hunger and in our tears. Later, Jesus taught them, whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. They must have thought to say a silent prayer, increase our faith. And in the verses immediately preceding today's gospel reading, Jesus instructed, if the same person sins against you seven times a day and turns back to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive. And the apostles cry out loud, increase our faith. How easy it is to feel overwhelmed by the demands of faith and the stress of life. How often do we wish for just a little more faith, a little clearer experience of God, a little deeper sense of God's presence and purpose and peace? As much as we may want to claim that all is well with our souls, we know that there are times when faith is so small that it seems almost absent. There are dark nights of our soul when even faith the size of a mustard seed 
seems impossible to grasp. That darkness can manifest itself through grief or depression. It can enter our lives through addiction or illness. It can be as a response to overwhelming responsibilities at work or at home. It can show up as a fleeting sense of abandonment or can linger as a long struggle to hold on to God. Like Habakkuk, we can find ourselves crying out to a God who seems silent in the face of evil. Like the apostles, we can feel so lost that we cry out for a greater measure of faith just to pull us through. We're not alone. Mother Teresa of Calcutta wrote to her confessor in 1948, Jesus has a very special love for you. But as for me, the silence and the emptiness is so great that I look and do not see, listen and do not hear. The tongue moves in prayer but does not speak. Teresa's crisis of faith continued for more than 50 years largely hidden from the world until the time of her death. Martin Luther's dark night of the soul is well documented in his own writings. Historian David Steinmetz describes the terror which Luther experienced as a fear that God had turned his back on him once and for all, abandoning him to suffer the pains of hell. Feeling alone in the universe, Luther doubted his own faith, his own mission, and the goodness of God doubts which drove him deeper and deeper into despair. And I have to admit that God's response to Teresa and Luther, to Habakkuk and the disciples, to you and to me, is often less than satisfying. Habakkuk complains, O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? And God tells him to make a big sign and to wait some more. The disciples plead, increase our faith. But Jesus dismisses their request, telling them that if they had faith the size of a mustard seed, they could uproot a mulberry tree, and comparing them to slaves who are only doing their duty. Doesn't Jesus want his disciples to have more faith? Doesn't God care that our faith can be a struggle? But what if, what if faith isn't meant to take away our doubt and struggles? What if faith doesn't give us the wisdom to understand great mysteries? What if faith doesn't convey power to perform mighty acts? What if faith isn't even the ability to conjure up feelings of closeness to God. What if faith is simply the courage to put one foot in front of the other, even though we're not sure where we're going? What if faith is crying out in the darkness, even when we aren't sure there's anybody listening? What if faith is waiting for God to show up and help this broken world, even when it seems that our situation is hopeless? Maybe faith is Mother Teresa holding the dying poor in Calcutta for 50 years, all the while doubting the presence of God. Maybe faith is Martin Luther picking up a pen in his deepest depression and translating the Psalms. Maybe faith is a grieving widow finally going out to lunch with her friends. Maybe it's an alcoholic walking into her first or her hundredth AA meeting. Maybe it's a stressed out dad packing lunches for his kids. Maybe it's a disillusioned voter stepping into the voting booth to make a difficult choice. Maybe it's a church member singing the hymns, even though the words sound hollow. Because sometimes 
faith is small. Sometimes it's smaller than a mustard seed. Sometimes it's so tiny that we can't even recognize it in ourselves. And that's okay because it's not our faith that saves us. It's not our faith that makes us children of God. Jesus Christ saves us by his grace. He who cried from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Loves every helpless one of us and claims us as his own. And yes, there will be times by God's grace that we have the faith to see our burdens as a blessing, faith to pick up our cross and follow Jesus, faith to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and forgive those who sin against us, there will be times when our faith is strong enough to share with others so that we can build them up in their doubt and despair. And yet there will be other times when our faith is secure enough and it is no less secure to say, I can't feel God. Times when our faith is strong enough to take one more step on a seemingly impossible journey. Times when our faith is powerful enough to allow our tears to flow and our hearts to break. For that too is the work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, increase our faith, the disciples plead. But it's not more faith we need. We need Jesus' love to hold us in our struggles. We need Christ's resurrection to defeat once and for all the powers of sin, darkness, and death. We need God's grace to embrace us in all our brokenness. We need the Spirit's help to live one day at a time as beloved children of God. So remember your baptism. Listen to God's word. Eat Jesus' body given for you. Drink his blood shed for you. Hope in the promise of Easter. And in life and death, in the darkness and the light, go in peace and serve the Lord. The faith you've been given is enough. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Rejoicing in the Spirit's work among us, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Be near us, O God, whether our faith feels great enough to move mountains or so small that we cannot sense your presence. In all things, hold us close, deliver us from evil, and let us go in peace to serve as we are able. Hear us, O God. Raise up faithful parents and grandparents, prophets and teachers who know, love, and spread your gospel. Hear us, O God. Tend and nurture the, hand, the lands and seas, O God. Raise up faithful stewards of all you have entrusted to human care. Hear us, O God. Save the nations, O God. Raise up faithful leaders who strive for peace and justice in the midst of violence and destruction. Hear us, O God. Guard those in need, O God. Raise up faithful advocates and caretakers for those who are oppressed, poor, lonely, imprisoned, bereaved, or sick. Especially, we pray for Marie, Daryl, Warren, Jane, Samuel, Ina, Tom, Brian, Pat, Glenn, Richard, Diana, and Mark. Hear us, O oh God. Give vision to this congregation, O oh God. Raise up faithful teachers, staff, volunteers, worship leaders, and vestry members who serve with purpose, joy, boldness, and love. Hold in, your, hold in your love our members, Donald and Peggy, Amy and John, Catherine and Bradley, Vicki and Benjamin, Melissa, Ellis and Rice, and all who gather in this fellowship. Hear us, O oh God. You abolish death, O oh God. Thank you for all those you called according to your purpose and who now rest in your light. Hear us, O oh God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.